welcome to Rospel. Rospel is currently in Uganda. She is a communication strategist focusing on multimedia. She is a public speaker and an award-winning blogger. And today, uh, in the context of our discussions about asylum and migration, which we usually in Europe tend to, of course, to discuss from a very European perspective, we are very glad to discuss with you and hear a little bit uh, about your perspective um, on, on migration and what you think uh, we should add to our thoughts and our discussions. It's really an honor to talk to you about uh, um, a topic that has I've increasingly, increasingly followed over the last uh, few years. Um, as uh, Daniela said, I've been, I worked with the International Organization for Migration in Geneva. And I must say, even when I arrived there in Geneva, migration was not yet, uh, it was beginning to, to get international attention. And uh, I must say, be, before migration was looked at as something that, uh, you know, some people from Africa are trying to get into Europe. And uh, when, when you actually go to your Google and type the word migration, you will actually find a lot of stuff about Africans coming to Europe or somebody else, and maybe from the Middle East coming to Europe, but no, very few writings because of the obvious uh, um, reasons. Uh, I think we have uh, seen a whole lot of media coverage uh, on migration into Europe, but not the other way around. And that is the biggest uh, problem, uh, I think, in the coverage of, of migration issues that I've seen. But also, Lydia most often blurs the, the story out, the fact that most of the migration actually in the world is taking place within countries, that the first person in Uganda to migrate will not think of Europe, that they'll first move maybe, I, I grew up from a village in Uganda, 18 years of my life, I would go to and go back there. So definitely, I did not grow up thinking of going to Europe. Uh, I, I grew up going to school and hoping to get a job and, and work here. Um, and uh, it, it, so it, it's very interesting how people cover migration. It's not like people wake up and say, I'm going to go. It's a process. We are not seeing that story being told that actually Africans more than ever are easily, can easily travel to some of the, of the other countries. Uh, Africa has a very, very young population. Uh, my country, Uganda, has, um, I think, 70% of our population is below the age of 35. And uh, of course, we are struggling with job creation for this young population. And uh, and I think more than ever, it's important to invest in the youth and in in areas where youth are going to get employed. And uh, increasingly, of course, what is not being talked about, Ugandans are moving to the east. A lot of Ugandans are going to China. A lot of Ugandans are going to Dubai to work, Malaysia, Singapore. That is a story that we don't tell because the story of a poor migrant going to Europe kind of um, uh, goes on the top of the deck. It tells a story of exchange, people going out to get ideas and come back. And actually, many times they don't stay for too long. And uh, I think that is one one important aspect of uh, migration when you're talking about Africa, that Africans are going not only to, to the north, but many of them are going to the east to work. And they go and work and come back and develop their communities. Uh, and migration or refugees coming to Europe is made so dramatic. Uh, my own country, Uganda, is one of the most top hosting uh, refugees in the world. You know, we have refugees from Somalia, from uh, from Sudan, from South Sudan, from Congo. They've been living here from Rwanda still. And uh, of course, uh, people, uh, I think government has uh, restructured our own migration policies and refugee policies to make it easier for actually refugees to come and live in our cities. They are no longer confined to, to camps. And, and and I think that's something that we have to realize in the 21st century that, you know, 20 years ago, a refugee from South Sudan could be stuck in a in a camp in northern Kenya in Kakuma waiting for, uh, I don't know, USID or whichever agency, um, DFID to deliver them aid. But many times these people right now who are being displaced are young people. And we are very connected. Uh, People on WhatsApp, even refugees you're talking about, if they can have a phone, 
They understand what's going on in the world. They know that there's an opportunity somewhere. So these young people are not going to be staying in that camp in a remote area waiting for somebody to deliver them aid. They are going to go into the cities, they'll come to Kampala, they'll go to Nairobi and try to make a living. If they can't make a living in there, then they will think of another third country to travel to. So that, that, that we have to think that we are no longer dealing with the refugee situation or migration like it was that people would actually spend uh, 20 years in camps waiting to go back to their countries. Uh, people now know that there is alternatives and we cannot hide away from those alternatives. So our refugee settlements and how we approach refugees has to change. We have to give them an opportunity. They can no longer sit in a, in a, in a refugee camp waiting for a conflict to end. such a very um, active uh, social media person and Twitterer, is there kind of a discourse on migration in, in, in your Ugandan communities on Twitter uh, and on I, social media? Sorry. Uh, actually, migration has not been, um, uh, not only uh, even in Uganda, migration has always been viewed as, you know, within, like we think of migrating within our own countries. And since okay. I come from a country where we don't have very huge diaspora, people generally in Uganda are not moving in large numbers out. So for us, migration was is within. We think of within the East African community. We think within our own uh, country. So we do not have that advanced debate. Maybe the debate will be bigger in countries like Senegal, in countries like um, like uh, Nigeria and uh, Mali, where actually a lot of people are coming and going far away from the continent. For us, migration is, is really still within the discourse. Few people are actually engaged in it, and the discourse is still within, intro, within in the country. That migration is connected to the rising of the African middle class? Uh, that, that's an interesting uh, question. Of course, there, there are certain people who are educated and they can move to look for opportunities. But I don't think actually a person in the African middle class is interested in going away from Africa because they enjoy much more at home than if they were in Europe. So I think for an African middle class person, what they're interested in is free movement, you know, to be able to, I, that I can actually move from Uganda and easily go visit a friend in Spain. Uh, Europe must make it easy for people from Africa to travel. It's not about migrants. It's, it's about the people travel opportunity for opportunities for study for business, and and that's the middle class we are talking about. And and people are connected. Even those people before who could not, uh, they are exchanging information. They are consuming information at a faster rate than it ever happened. So they might not be middle class, but they know that there's a job in Dubai. They know that there's a job in Singapore, and they will go and look for that job. So I, I really believe that Africa's middle class, people are more, not likely to move, uh, to emigrate. They are more likely to want to move, to e to easily go and uh, maybe make uh, make a business uh, contact with people, but they'll come back because uh, being in the middle class in the continent, I think, is much better than being in Europe uh, without any, uh, most of these, uh, of these benefits. What is the social media platform of choice? Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? Uh, Facebook is uh, right now a big, but uh, WhatsApp, uh, the instant messaging, uh, is actually most influential right now. That's how people share information, videos um, cr from across the borders, from all over Africa. We have uh, in a day you can find videos from everywhere, and people are sharing it through WhatsApp. So WhatsApp is the fastest growing sharing um, uh, channel in in the region. Do I get it right that people are more mobile in general nowadays, changing country job more easily and maybe going back from Europe or other countries to Africa after some months or year? Yes, uh, of course, so people coming back from the diaspora to actually invest. But as, as I say, Ugandan diaspora is not too big. It's there, but we do not, compared to many other countries, we don't, it doesn't really, it's a big, remittance is a very high, but when we talk about tradition there, so maybe Europe, uh, right now remittances are coming in from, you know, a lot of countries, uh, even Asian countries, where people go for, for, for some maybe a year's job or, you, you know, short-term contracts. 
Atin says that he talked to an African journalist who said that many Africans returned to their home countries after the financial crisis in Europe in 2008. Can you can you agree on this? Did you share this? Um... Yes, that's true because uh, suddenly people did not have the protections. I think they felt vulnerable and they thought they had the money which can actually get them a better life in, in their countries of mm -hmm. origin. A lot of people coming in from the diaspora and investing in their own country and realizing that, that if they put this money in their home country, that it can actually make more gain. Uh, it's not susceptible to, uh, to maybe the same uh, economic crisis they would have suffered if, if their money was somewhere in a bank instead of they realize that the, the, the environment is right for them to come back and make and, and make more money and, uh, and and many people are coming back what are the stories that you would like to see about african migration for me what has been important is that uh, people people as uh, in africa many times um we've been fed the, uh, the image of europe that might not be the image that people understand so in the past, I've seen a couple of programs that actually made many friends of mine who have maybe never traveled uh, understand a life, sometimes what a life can be uh, when you're an immigrant somewhere in the lack of family or social networks. Th that, that had a reality that people usually are not told about or they don't understand that actually moving to Europe might not be this easy. And the problem is that when they talk about African migrants in Europe, someone is talking about them, but we do not see them in their story. We do not give them a chance to talk about their own story and how they came, the, how, how they've managed to make it, and what they think are the gains and what, how, what have they lost. That is a very important story to talk about. Politicians tell us that it was about improving living locally in the countries of your origins of refugees or migrants uh, and also of African refugees. Do you think that, th that this is possible and what exactly that could look like? I think the, the improvement of living standards is going to be it's a long term solution, to be honest. It's not, uh, you know, European countries are putting together money quickly and they say they're going to put it in here and there. And I just hope that they are not looking for a rushed <laughs> solution <laughs> because uh, it's not going to work like that. So it's about creating alternatives. And this has to be done, of course, with the government and uh, looking at b budgeting, you know, looking at uh, where, what are the rising industries so that people feel that they can stay in their country and work there. So I don't think on the other hand, that containing people in the country is what should be our priority. <laughs> we, we already, of course, have uh, sustainable development goals, making sure that people can access a certain standard of living, that they can have access to health, they can have access to education. And by the, the more people you educate, the more they want to, to find opportunities. So I don't think that there will be an easy shortcut uh, to that. We need really proper planning. And uh, this will be done by our governments. They they will need help from outside. But I don't. I hope that the fund that the Europeans are putting together is not going to be a shortcut kind of fund. Uh, Marcos is asking if you if there are any examples of things European politicians should spe specially uh, abstain from. So have you any very bad examples? <laughs> You know, a, a few years ago, I think there was uh, many countries are sponsoring these public, uh, they are putting a lot of money into media campaigns, and uh, which are okay, but they are not really successful. Trying to scare off people not to go. You know, people are moving because they are desperate. So if you're spending millions of euros trying to tell people not to go, I don't know why don't you use it to invest it you know, in places where people can get added value and stay. So it's not time to do things to be seen. It's time to do actually real work and solve the, 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 the world's uh, issues. Because at the heart of uh, migration is really, uh, despite migration is inequality. There's a lot of inequality in the world. And as long as another, uh, another country, another people cannot afford, they will move. The most important thing to do is contribute to uh, policies to you know projects that actually improve equality 
income equality in uh, that reduces the gaps in income in income that we we still face or even in standards of living because I think most people would uh, rather stay in their homes if they had those um, if they had those opportunities because being an outsider and trying to uproot yourself is not something people do just easily they think about it they think about the consequences and they realize that maybe it's the only way they, they have to survive. What do you think of Silicon Savannah in Kenya uh, yeah. and about startups and digital media? Do they offer enough jobs for the youth and are there similar plans in Uganda? We cannot innovate ourselves out of poverty. There's, there is an extent which entrepreneurial innovation will work. Before that works, we need certain systems in place. And if, if you make, for example, there is a, a group in Uganda, young people, they, they made a, an, a, they, they are working on, a, a, they are working on apps, they are working on machines and, uh, where they can actually detect cervical cancer. What are the chances? Yes, you know, we write about them, they've done it. What are the chances that they will be up by the Ministry of Health, somebody to go to another phase? actually fully innovate not just be one time app developer but be something so we are not seeing a lot of investment in this technology you know it, it's just it's a small you know uh, groups of people doing something and if we do not have real streamlined policies that actually can benefit these people who are trying to innovate and uh, innovate around uh, solutions that to, to certain problems we have then they can only do so much so I think the startups are good, but still we cannot deter ourselves from the politics and the fact that we need better governance. We need to stop corruption. We need to stop. Um, we need to stop the outflow of money from Africa to to other the continents in the world. How big is the influence of China in Uganda? Well, uh, of course, China is uh, relative. The influence is relatively new, and of course, we are seeing it in. In a, a lot in 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 construction infrastructure, and um, and uh, it's increasing. It's a very good development uh, that African countries can gain from, but it's also something cautious uh, to know it's an evolving relationship. And uh, we have seen a lot of Chinese immigration into Africa. Uh, a lot of Chinese skilled workers coming in into Africa. So it's it's an evolving uh, it, it it's a needed uh, some countries need that boost to 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 develop their technology in their infrastructure to the next level. Uh, but it's also something that uh, th that has caused tensions in some Africans. People feeling oh this is another colonization we don't need. To. I say thank you all. Thank you very much and thank good you. night, Rose Bell. Good, good night. night. Good night, everyone. Good night.